I think it works very well, actually, because it's actually quite nice to hear an outsider's rather more cynical view about, uh, you know, the business, if you like. And it's all about selling as well. I mean, they're, you know, they're pushing microwaves, you're pushing records. Well, MTV is anyway, you know, we're not pushing records. Are you a bit dubious about videos as well? Yeah, very. I think that if, on the one hand, if you start off with a concept that's different from the song, you know, it doesn't make it because it's not what the song is about. On the other, on the other pole, if you go and say exactly what the song says, that doesn't make it anyway because you're saying the same thing twice. So by and large, it doesn't. Video to me doesn't make it at all, and uh, I'm much happier. I mean, I've 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 tried to let filmmakers off in in the past, you know, sort of have their own visions to sort of be free and you know, to try and interfere with them as filmmakers but I really think that the best way of doing getting around this one at the moment is is to base things on performance and things like uh, alchemy actually like better than anything else just because it's real it's um, and I don't I don't think people get as fed up with with it it's just related to the music and the musicians playing it. I mean, most musicians anyway, they're, they're, they're awful actors and... Uh, it's embarrassing, isn't it? It, the time, it is really, pretty awful. You know. And I'm certainly on, say, this thing so far away that we've just done. You know, I didn't want to be sh sort of shot like, looking out of a, a window and then, you know, contemplating a telephone. I think that that's... Um, <laughs> It's just one step better than Crossroads, and it's probably not even that. I don't, I don't see that that achieves anything. People then have heard now, what, two tracks off the album, and already I'm sure they'll be struck by the variation just in those two records. But, I mean, all the way through the album, there's so many variations, so many different types of song. W would you, I mean, was it almost like a, a showreel, if you like, of the different types of, of thinking and songs you can write now? No, not at all. There's nothing was done for demonstration purposes, and there's, there's no, nothing like that at all about it. It's just that's the way they came out. That's what I was writing, and uh, I think there is a, a fair amount of a fair variety in there. But that's just the way that they come out, and you have to stay reasonably true to uh, what you've written. You can't start welding them all into one sort of style. Um, there's no real law about songs to me, I and mean, sometimes, sometimes things come easy. And uh, I think you'd be just lying if you said it was all difficult, because it's really not. I mean, it's the same. The same's true for writing. I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the writing is reasonably easy, and uh, you'd be kidding if you said it was it was tortuously difficult all the time. It's really not. But it it can get it can get difficult. Uh, um, in this case, it can get difficult afterwards. It can get difficult trying to make it as, to do the very best version that you can. And yet still, you see, it's, it's a fairly simple sound you seem to go for. I mean, probably deceptively simple. It's probably very difficult to make it sound that simple. And you don't clutter a track out with lots of different things going on all the time, do you? You keep it fairly basic. No, but we probably have. It probably has been cluttered. In other words, you try lots and lots of parts that, that, don't, that don't work. And I mean, you might think they work. I mean, I think they work half the time. Go get very excited. Oh, I love that! I love that. And Neil, you know, who's the co-producer and the engineer, he's sitting there going, "I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it." And then I go, "Oh God, no! I don't like it either." <coughs> so I don't usually take much convincing. Um, so I think I owe him. I really owe him a lot in terms of that. Otherwise, all kinds of garbage you'd get on these tracks. We'll play another track, actually. I never thought I'd introduce a, a, a Dire Straits track that doesn't have, actually, very much guitar on it. I'm going to talk about your latest trick. See, now, but you see, now, for instance, an example of that would be that we had flugelhorn originally there and then replaced it, and then we had a uh, brass section in there and replaced that with a single saxophone. And uh, there's lots and lots of bits and pieces. I mean, that could have had guitar all over it. So it's weird, it's just, eventually it's the mixture that strikes you as being right. Your latest trick from Brothers in Arms, the new Dire Straits album. We're talking to Mark Knopfler in Paris, which is uh, a tough job, but someone's got to do it, I suppose. <laughs> um, the biggest surprise, and I think it's going to surprise a lot of people, Mark, really, is how different the guitar sound is on a lot of the tracks. I mean, we've got used to you playing the out-of-phase Stratocaster, mm -hmm. and yet 
well, it's, it's what sounds like to me at least, a much richer tone of a Gibson or something on a lot of these tracks. Yeah, there's a, a Gibson on a couple of, couple of things, you know. Brownie points for, for uh, noticing the guitar. Oh yeah, you know? well, well played, well played. But interesting, interesting you should do that because you have become terribly well known for one sound, haven't you? I think I was uh, um, about three years ago, I think, that things start, did start to change um, straight after the, the band changed from four piece to five and then six and so on and so forth. Uh, and I started doing different versions of old tunes. So, um, but y you're right. I mean, you're right that there is this thing. But I think that's, that's um, come more from just people associating with early tunes and also there's a certain style just because I, I usually play with a, a set of fingers rather than a set of picks. You must be aware of the fact that guitars are definitely in fashion then all of a sudden. I mean you're probably to do with this as well I think you know. Do, do you like a lot of the guitars you hear playing nowadays? A lot oh, more guitar bands you know. Yeah yeah I was I've always loved guitar and um, I loved I, I, yeah I, I yeah Oh, I'm always um, appreciative of uh, guitar playing. A lot of guitarists I like actually don't really play that well. I mean, I don't think that I play that well. And um, uh, that's a lot of the kind of playing that I like. I mean, I'm not really what you'd call a schooled uh, player. So it's more sort of a sort of self-taught strummer, really. And I've always liked that kind of playing, I think, more than... Any playing that's got soul, I like. And the guitar is easy to... It's easier, I think, to get soulful on than a lot of other instruments. Nice sax playing as well has always got me going. I get the impression, you know, just listening to you talk, that you actually enjoy playing live more than the studio. Although, obviously, it's a different challenge. Yeah, I do. I think I do. Is this, is this one of the reasons it's been two and a half years? Mm, I just think that it, it's, like a, it's like a party every night. It's like a celebration. Because the fans are amazing, and uh, there's millions of them, and you really, it's like when you go on, you know, they're waving at you from miles away, and they're so pleased, and it's really great to see them. Is and it always uh, nice? I mean, no worries yeah, or fears uh, about being no. taken that seriously? Oh, no, no fears about that, really. I mean, I think you've got to be a bit daft if you start getting uptight about all of that sort of thing. Um, I used to get a bit nervous about going on stage in the old days, when we probably before we were really ready to be doing these horrendously big gigs. But now I just don't bother at all. I think that last tour was was really happening, and uh, and this one will. And so it's it's it's, um, it's something you look forward to. How much do you think your work on film soundtracks has influenced the way you write and play generally? Because you've done a fair amount of this now. And you, it seems to me the band's always been interested in, in creating atmospheres. I mean, you've always been interested in creating atmospheres with songs. But more and more so now, they seem to be. Well, I feel that the, the film stuff is... It's, it's a good exercise for me to do that, to try and do it and at least. First of all, if you're a, a singer-songwriter man, you know, and then you're feeding your own ego left, right and centre with all this self-expression, blah, blah. And it's good to be able to get away from that and do something for somebody else that's... Like, it's like a session, really, where you you are trying to please somebody else and you're offering them the best that you, you think you can do. And you, but you're working with them very much. And, um, and hopefully the stuff at the end is going to please everybody. No, that's good for you. See, the reason I mention it is I think Ride Across the River sounds like a soundtrack. So, I mean, actually, mm. to me, it sounds a bit like a spaghetti western sort of soundtrack, actually. Mm. Is there a... D can you see that? Yes, I suppose so. I suppose so. It's sound effect. A lot of, the, a lot of it is sound effect. But uh, I'm actually much less interested in, in that than I was, I think, a few years ago, I think. That things have changed since then, and um, I think the thing about the, the the thing that's going to inspire kids in terms of movies now, which are, which have uh, there's a sense of that there's a good and bad and very very broad strokes, and, um, I, I've, I've actually changed. I've actually shifted from the west. I think the first time I saw Mad Max, I realised that, uh, and 
that the Western was dead. I, th I think, in fact, I mean, I, my personal theory is that the Mad Max dispensed with the Western at a stroke. Would you like to work in, I don't know, plays or films? I mean, you talk a lot about films. You're obviously a great fan, you know. Would you like to have a go at it? Oof. I really think that. I don't think I'm a very good record producer. I don't think I'm a very good... Uh, I don't think I could write a play. And I'm sure I'd be a terrible movie director. Um, and I really think that what I'm, what I'm best at is what I'm doing. Right across the river from Brothers in Arms, the new Dire Straits album. We're talking to Mark Knopfler on the programme at the moment. Are, are you still worried when you put a record out about how it's going to be accepted by the audience? Uh, no, uh, not really. And I think people just like to come and see us play. And uh, I think they'd probably forgive us if, if, we, uh, if we put out a record that, that wasn't as good as some of the last ones because maybe they'd think well next time it'll be all right <laughs> uh, i'm not really that bothered about that at all i'm not going to have you apologizing for the voice there because i think actually on this record more than any of the others I, I, you're trying a lot harder it seems to me i mean and I, I mean that I, I makes it sounds like you're not getting away with it but well, i mean no, the only you are trying to sing much more aren't you well i'm trying because i actually wrote a load of these things in the wrong key so that <laughs> basically they're higher you know which is something i can't do no, I think you can do it better, you see. What I'm saying is I think ah, you're singing you miles see, better. You weren't there when I was really trying to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you never got the low down. I thought, you, I thought it sounded as though you've got a lot more confidence in your voice than perhaps you did when you started. I think, oh, I, th I certainly think there's more confidence in everything since, since we started. And, uh, but that just comes from doing it. It's almost like doing interviews. You're probably really worried when you had to do your first interview and, and it's obvious that it doesn't bother you anymore. And it's exactly the same uh, in a music game. Did you feel that way, first of all, then, about singing? I mean, did you actually have very little confidence in your voice at that stage? Yeah, and when I was playing with this a rockabilly and uh, R&B band years and years ago, before the Dire Straits thing, um, the singer in the band, because I was just playing, I was playing guitar there and doing some background vocals, believe it or not, and uh, he wanted to sing a couple of my tunes, and I heard him trying to sing a couple of the tunes in rehearsal, and, uh, to me, it just, it just it wasn't it. It just wasn't it, so I started singing my own songs more and more, and uh, I, di I, didn't, I just didn't think that it was right to me. It just didn't feel right, somebody else singing it. So again, what you're saying is it's more about feel yeah, than it's all, it is well, about technique. It's certainly not about technique, mate, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly not. And it just, singing, uh, I don't really think about it. I never, never thought of myself in terms of... Um, uh, of that, uh, I mean, I really like great singers, and, uh, um, and again, uh, they're not all sort of Johnny Mathis type voices. They're not all, all but I, I've always had a, a thing about you know great, great singers, Nat King Cole, or, but um, uh, obviously, obviously, wish I could sing. That that would be uh, that would be that would be great too. But I'm, I am in, I am happy being me. Another complete change of mood then from the uh, from the album, Walk of Life, which to me is a real out and out pop song. This isn't it? To me, it's it's not so much pop. It's like a, almost like a rockabilly style of tune, which is again it's the same sort of music that uh, I've come up playing and been playing for a long time. Nice to see, nice to hear you really cheerful there, because I think you got lumbered with that sort of moody uh, tag a bit, didn't you? Oh yeah, definitely. I think things like private investigations and. Uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet, you know, people sort of think, oh God, this is going to, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's of, uh, he's one of them, but uh, uh, it's not true really, no, it's definitely not true. You're about to do this enormous tour then, but uh, do you ever hearken after the old days, I mean, playing in pubs and little tiny clubs and things like that? I mean, it's a great, it's a great myth, I think, that everybody hearkens back to that time as being the most exciting and the most exhilarating. I wonder how you feel yourself. Well, it's a, it's a double-edged thing, that. I think you'd be a liar if you said, you know, you didn't care about any of those times, because obviously we do. Um, and there's, there's, no matter what people say uh, about great shows in big places and stuff like that, it's still nothing to me quite like a small room that's really jumping.
and uh, we do try when we're on tour to play in small rooms now and again we make fools of ourselves in clubs after shows sometimes and uh, borrow bands equipment do you think that's how you'll end up i mean you know yeah i think that that's definitely what it'll be i'll be staggering off with a walking stick and a guitar you know down to the, the corner club and be, that's <laughs> that's really how i see it i don't because uh, that's what I am. I think that's what I do. It's just like other people paint pictures, and that's and this is what I do. Obviously, when we're going to do a you know a special thing like this, you you check up into somebody's past, you know. And obviously, I've had to look into some of the things you've done in the past as well. And I see that years and years and years ago, you used to write uh, rock criticism for the Yorkshire Evening Post. Were you any good? I was ter I thought I was terrible. I mean, I felt that. I mean, I was 18 years old. And I didn't feel as though I knew anything. I remember once being given a book to review, a rock and roll book. And I thought, well, it's all right, people can do this on the Sunday Times, but how, you know, <laughs> how do I do it? Um, the last story I did was when I was leaving, I, 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 left, I left the paper because I wanted to go to college and learn something. And the last day Jimi Hendrix died and I was they put me on court report in because uh, I could do shorthand and I was over in Leeds Town Hall and the news editor rang up and he said hello young man he said uh, this uh, Jimmy Henderson's died you know did you know him you know that sort of thing and um, I s God and I sat there and I went well hello I said well, no, I didn't know him. But he was this, 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 and this, and this. And, and he said, well, I want you to get a piece over to the news desk, you know, straight away. I'll give you five minutes. We'll wait for you, you know. And I remember just dictating some stuff about, about Jimmy and just walking out of the building. I just walked out of the building and uh, I left, left the job. I went to a bar with some mates and got plastered and... Uh, and that was the end of me in journalism, and I think that I, n I never, re never really wanted to go back. I never, I never really missed it. I never. It always struck me as being something that was just a bit too savage for me. It's interesting that there should be the end for you. I mean, you talk about being savage. I mean, in a way, you, you, were, you were being told to put into words something which is very difficult to put into words. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I couldn't. I mean, I don't really. I can't remember what I said now. But it couldn't possibly have come close to how you felt. I guess. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, when I first heard Jimi Hendrix, when I first heard Hey Joe, I was a kid on the back playing field of my school, and I remember just jumping up into the air. So the same sort of response from the first time you heard The Shadows, perhaps, as well? Oh, when I was a kid, yeah. 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 The sound of... It would tell you what was the thrill, was getting up with The Shadows and playing... I played rhythm guitar on uh, Wonderful Land, which I loved. And rhythm guitar on Local Hero, which, they, of course, the theme that they recorded. And um, that was great. They enjoyed getting up with us too. They got up with us <laughs> one day. But it was obviously always the guitar. I mean, always, always, you know, the guitar was the thing that really moved you. Even before, I suppose, you played it. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to just pester my my, my dad, and it was real sort of nose up against the window pane kind of of the music store. Just like have you seen that Shadows ad? Mm. Absolutely. The thing with those little kids yeah. in it. Well, it was just like that. And then tennis rackets and. Uh, the whole number actually learn how to play on a tennis racket and, and it's just all those cliches you know so so it to a certain extent that's true that's that is what what's happened for me and, and you're looking at a very happy boy